in large measure, you need to be looking for answers to find them. You know, you, you find what you're looking for. I mean, you can come across things and think, oh, that's interesting. But it's probably interesting yet again because um, there's a gap in your experience that you suspect um, needs filling. So Jesus starts typically with those that have ears to hear, let them hear. To evangelize then is not to contact everybody, except as regards being available. In that sense, of course, to be known um, is helpful to them. Uh, it may not be helpful to you if to be known by people that are against you uh, simply amasses the enemy against you. <laughs> so the safer policy is simply to live alive to the fact that people around you, some of them, may be searching. So you're sensitive to whether they are or not. Equally, there's not much point in you going to someone or some group that's teaching something you know to be what you know already and have either accepted, fine, or rejected, fine. Of course, you may be looking yourself to some extent. You have many of the answers, but not all of them. And uh, you're looking in what you understand to be possibly the more likely place. You make inquiries. You may say, oh, why do you think that? Or what do you think the answer to this is? And then you listen. Now, you may not accept what they say, and you might say, why? Not to persuade them to be other than what they are, but simply to get clearer in your own mind whether you should accept or reject what you're hearing. So we're not a pain to other people in that we ram it down their throats or we pursue them. We are available, especially to those we know that are seeking. And by seeking, I mean seeking something potentially like what you think already. If this thinking, seeking something quite different, then there's no point. You're just an aggro to them. So I can remember as a teenager at some point noticing an advert in a magazine of some sort or other that Advertise the Rosicrucians, ancient wisdom, something to do with life skills or understanding. Anyway, and I thought, oh, I wonder what that is. But um, it wasn't quite like um, this century. One didn't automatically find out, you know, by um, internet. Yeah, I just wondered and ignored it from then on, you know. And yet I've found decades later that it was in a way what I was looking for and would have matched particularly well when I got interested to study Plato in philosophy. I was a 17-year-old reading in the public library reference department. Um, and I certainly didn't dream that um, what we call Christianity 
and it's um, assumed a sort historic roots in uh, Judaism would be in any way related to anything referring to um, ancient wisdom or whatever the Rosicrucians are or, or anything else. It's like theosophy and so on I'd, I'd not heard of until well probably 15 years ago. I would never have dreamt that it could have been, that Christianity could have been a sort of rehash of ancient um, Egyptian come Persian religion. I did sort of vaguely wonder why or how the three wise men were supposedly wise but then I just assumed that they had the uh, and rightly perhaps the wisdom of the Chaldees uh, just like um, Daniel had excelled in when he was in captivity there according to the story and yeah fair enough they're probably astrologers and uh, in some sense they were looking for something they had divined from studying the heavens and that if at all would have been as far as it went I'd heard of mystery cults until something less than 10 years ago I'd no idea that Christianity was simply a literalization of ancient wisdom And I'm not at, clear, at all clear that ancient wisdom is, in some sense, foolproof. Only that in some sense, it's the common ancestor of most of the religions that we find significant in history of the last 2,000 years or so, 3,000, 4,000 in what we might term Western or at least early on Mediterranean civilization. I still find the Jesus story actual in the Gospels, especially John, to be a significant step forward in not only a God that is moral and upright, and compassionate but loving and one who almost certainly will have nothing to do with sacrifice principle at all in as far as the sacrifice principle does enshrine um, some notion of difficulties in the present in order to have a better future you know, saving from consumption today that you might have investments that give a return tomorrow. In other words, it may have been fundamental in the amazing success, materially speaking, of Western Christian cultures. That much, so to speak, I can preserve of the sacrificial element in the ancient wisdom because of course killing to appease or pay debt um, is not for me at all and the crucifixion at best says to me God suffers with us in our temporary dilemma in this universe um, it's a way of saying that God um, truly understands the costs necessary. I'm not quite sure why it should be so necessary with an all-powerful, all-loving God. I suspect that 
in some very obvious ways. It's irrational to say all-powerful, depending what you include in the all. I mean, it's not quite acceptable, rationally speaking, to hold with contradictions. You know, a thing both cannot both be and not be at the same time. Not literally, it either is or it isn't. Is the foundation, the basic, basic single foundation of our rationality. And without rationality, then we don't have order. And God is order. I don't mean he's um, religious fundamentalist order in that um, he's got laws that cannot be breached. I think he has principles according to his foundational values. And his foundational values are for life goodness, blessing, happiness, joy, peace, health, vitality, wisdom, logic, consistency, and principles defer, if necessary, to what our values fundamentally must be. And by must be, I mean the values that are life-affirming for life itself, as opposed to against life, which would make God a, a self-contradiction. And that is disorder, which is not what I understand to be God. But when all said and done, what will be held to will be what's acceptable. And what's found to be acceptable will depend on our experience of such in the past. If a thing works, we tend to think it could well be right, and in what way is it right is our next fascination. When could it be wrong, for instance? And if it's not favourable in outcome to us, then we start to question. Because basically we too seek life. For we are born of God. We are born of the living God. We have potential for the same astonishing degree of living. And I see our stay in this universe as part of the training towards that. I'm not sure whether it's all of it or whether there are other universes or other dimensions. But that this has meaning living here in terms of eternal life and uh, a consistency, a harmony, a fellowship with God. But presumably is what he's seeking, what he values, else why would he have made us to want such? In other words, you can Look closely at what you want and you will know both yourself, who you are and who your God is. Especially from the point of view of God being your parent, you're the child of this God. He's your dad. And in that sense I found the Jesus story this emphasis on the name of God being Father and uh, Jesus being concerned to rescue individual people all of them from any walk of life well that's just wonderful to me that's the way I want to go thank you dad just like to add a comical note here. I listened to this. <laughs> 14 minutes of traffic. <laughs> Even aeroplanes at some point I could hear. Probably the hospital helicopter going overhead. 
and I'm oblivious of it. I just plow on. I, I gain this uh, amazing level of concentration um, before going to university. In fact, right back then in third year at school, you know, sort of 13, 14 year old, 15, my mind concentration riveted to what the teacher was saying. Nothing was going to shift me from concentration. And what others may have had in brilliance, I far surpassed just through concentration. <laughs> it's a case of the, I said, the hare and the tortoise, isn't it? Just utterly focused, fixed concentration. I mean, I don't notice it when I'm doing it, of course, I just do it now. <laughs> but when I listen to it, I think, goodness, is anyone going to manage to get through listening to some of these recordings when there's so much traffic in the background? Well, of course, the recording may be emphasising traffic noise in some sense. I don't know, but as you can tell, I'm sitting <laughs> in a tiny shopping centre on the corner of a roundabout <laughs> in the car, but I must have had some windows open in order to breathe, you know. It's a nice day, it was. Nice day. Just earlier on this morning. Thank you, Dad. <laughs>